happening depending on whichever part of the world you are in. And welcome to our monthly recurring UPU Consultative Committee webinar, a series that is designated for exploration and collaboration. I'll also take a moment to wish all the folks joining from India for the 76th Independence Day. My name is Santosh Gopal. I'm the Vice Chairman for Consultative Committee of UPU. I'm honored to serve as a host today. Together, every month, we pick and choose a very relevant topic and embark on a journey of discovery and insights that bridge our industries. Today, our discussion spotlight rests on a pivotal role of freight and transport in propelling the e-commerce expansion. Delving into the potency of public partnerships, public-private partnerships, we'll explore how this synergy advances in e-commerce within the postal sector. I'm very fortunate and thrilled to introduce to you to all our elite and global panel. In fact, it's a truly global panel. We have Mr. Lars Carlson, Global Head of Trade and Customs at Maersk. We have Ghana Motrescu, VP of Global Sales at Nova Posta Ukraine. We have Ignacio Meyer, VP of Sales in Af for Europe and Africa for Mail America. He's based out of Argentina. Neil O'Neill, Chief Executive Officer of Creative Collisions Ireland. And Jacko Wurzbuich, Senior Manager in Transport of Logistics in Netherlands. And last but not least, Mr. Walter Trezek, our Honorable Chair for the Conservative Committee and Co-Chair of E-Commerce Europe, will be the subject matter expert for today's session. And he's based out of Vienna, Austria. So let us start probably with a presentation from Mr. Walter. Our, I hope everybody is able to see the screen. And Mr. Walter, uh, please get started. Thank you. Thank you, Santosh. Um, a very warm welcome also for me here currently from Austria. Um, I'm delighted uh, that we already have 85 participants in that webinar, but um, I would like to give you a clear introduction to set the scene a little bit, because um, we face a major challenge um, in, in global e-commerce when it comes to shipping, to transport, to freight, to postal services. And um, my short presentation will focus right into that. Uh, it, it is, of course, all about data and the changing infrastructure in this world. So let me guide you through that and I will uh, use uh, certain uh, clear examples coming directly from the world of the Universal Postal Union. And what you see here on my slide um, is a screenshot coming out of clear circulars indicating uh, throughout the postal world what kind of data elements are mandatory uh, to be prepared already by the sender for handing over the shipments to postal operators. But this is also uh, the same, uh, more or less, for express carriers. So, Santos, please, um, next, next, um, uh, yes, thank you. So um, the most important thing, of course, is a clear description of the content, the quantity, the net weight, the value, the country of origin of goods, and um, predominantly now also globally, uh, the Harmonized Systems Tariff Code, the HS6 digit code, for each item and article contained within a postal consignment. The next step, of course, is a kind of consolidation um, of possible more than one of those items or articles um, into, into the postal item and consignment. So this is done uh, by fulfillment. So the first step has to be done by the clear supply chain inventory management. The second step is done by fulfillment. The third step is then the link to the postal or the first logistic operator. It starts with the shipping cost and postage. And the next step, uh, Santosh, is of course then linking it to the classical postal um, uh, requisites. That's the sender's name, the sender's address, the addressee's name, the addressee's address, possibly uh, in most cases also some indications about the telephone number or how the ad addressee can be, um, can be uh, approached. And, of course, a unique 
a unique identifier to be placed right onto the consignment to identify that consignment. So all that data is necessary, but you might have seen or identified already, it's coming from different resources and has to be brought together um, so that the express carrier or the designated operator can actually um, fulfill its obligation, um, carry it and hand it also over to any kind of logistics and transport resource. Um, all that, um, sorry, one back please. Thank you. Um, all that leads now um, to a very important change uh, which we have to identify within the next one or two uh, years. So there is new technology, completely new systems have to be implemented. There are totally new supply chain processes. There are new actors. Um, there is new and better data mandatory already. There has to be a collaboration um, and exchange of information between all those actors um, in the supply chain. The customs uh, business processes um, are, are very different. So we have preloading data to be exchanged, pre-arrival data to be exchanged, um, the um, inclusion of customs procedures at arrival and at presentation leading to a clear risk management, um, not only in Europe, um, but also for transshipments um, all over the world. This is now being highlighted and is a major task for the World Customs Organization and all the customs organizations worldwide. Let me emphasize again, those, those data elements you see here in the different boxes under the responsibility of different actors have to be of highest quality to facilitate all that. Next slide, please. To summarize, um, we need a clearly updated virtual inventory uh, even prior to any sales conducted for at the point of sale. And that has to include prices, duties, customs, HS codes, what have you. Only then transport or the engagement of the first logistics operator is possible to fulfill not only the ob obligation when it comes to tariffs or handing down to last mile delivery, but also uh, to a transport security, product safety, and very soon, sustainability, the measurement of CO2, greenhouse gas emissions, the reporting on it, and the allocation. And lastly, of course, and this is the most important part yet again, it is all done um, to serve the customer's preferences. So it's not a linear exercise, but has to be also taken into account when it comes to PUDA locations, parcel boxes, unattended delivery. And I stop here because I'm sure that our distinguished panelists will look into those matters further. Thank you, Santos. Back to you. Thank you, Mr. Walter. As usual, you Santos, have you're muted. Sorry. Yes. As usual, you have certainly given very valuable insight on what's happening and what needs to be done as a mandatory step to boost this. And with this, we'll get into our panel questions. And we have four participants, and each of them would have one particular. Uh, each one would, would each would have them get two minutes to respond to those questions, and the question will be common for all of them. One of the key elements where a really a postal and private partnership is important is the last mile efficiency. And with this, I'll open up the questions first to Mr. Lars. Would you have? Would you like to share your views? And please try and keep it in less than two minutes. And we will, participants, you're free to add any questions to the chat. At the end of the session, we'll certainly review some of the questions and we'll come back and address that part. The questions which are not addressed will come back towards the end of the session or probably post-session. We'll send in uh, notifications and updates on those all those questions. So, Mr. Lars, uh, what's your view on how the last mile efficiency could be improved through the partnership with private and public players? Thank you very much, Santosh, and good morning and good afternoon, good evening, everybody. Uh, was also a, a great introduction from Walter, as always. 
let me start by saying it's great for us and for me to be involved in the CC and the UPU right now. And we're looking forward to working together as a new member. On this very important question, uh, Walter is, of course, right. We are uh, heading uh, into a, a situation where we have a lot of challenges ahead of us. However, I'm also optimistic about that because the world is changing. We've seen through the big changes and challenges over the last couple of years, and we don't have to mention what those have been, that the industry is changing as well. So private sector is changing to respond to resilience, to respond to various threats and, and difficulties. And while the regulators, which we'll come back to, of course, it's, it's also adding on new elements of, of demands here. I think there is also a positive trend where private sector is, is putting up systems supply chain visibility, different type of, of uh, uh, international uh, um, initiatives that actually can help and support the last mile delivery and actually the full supply chain uh, uh, efficiency in many different ways. We in Maersk are certainly doing that, but it can only be done by partnerships and cooperation here. There's nobody, single alone player or stakeholder uh, that actually can help and support and do this in a proper way. So it has to be a private partnership with uh, public and, of course, international institutions. Uh, let me finalize my first comment, uh, which uh, is directly about the question here about last mile efficiency. I think a good example, and we might come back to that later, is the Postal Prosperity Zone Initiative by UPU, which have been done through also UPUCC and members and memberships, which creates also a new model that actually can help and support and how you attach the best elements, the key points of each of the organization that has to work together to make this happen. Private sector, the different players in e-commerce, but also UPU and others, including ourselves and, and the freight forwarders uh, that is uh, involved. Uh, with also uh, different stakeholders of the customs policy uh, part, which in this case, and the postal prosperity zones is about the World Free Zone Organization and Free Zones. And of course, that in itself will help and support the last mile delivery, where everybody in that supply chain can become a partner that can do whatever they are best at. Uh, and again, UPU has a lot to offer on that side. And we are certainly, as Maersk and uh, as a freight forwarder, but also an integrator of trade, going to be very interested in taking part and partner with everybody else. At the end of the day, it's about data, data exchange. How do we collect the data? How do we process it through and do not duplicate it through the process, but actually do it in cost efficient way. That's where I think the postal operations can do a really good work. And that is also for the emerging economies and a huge opportunity for the future. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Carlson. That's very valuable. As some, I just summarized, data is becoming critical for every technology innovation. Uh, Ms. Uh, Ghana Matris, would you like to share your views? Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you, Lars, for your thoughts. I fully agree with everything what you mentioned before. Uh, collaboration between postal providers and private companies can create really fruitful and uh, healthy environment for e-commerce growth. And I believe here we can talk about speed and predictability as well, because data is important, but speed and predictability of the delivery, one of the um, main targets for our clients as well. Uh, as a Nova Posta, Nova Posta, in Ukraine, we are working hard to uh, fulfill all of our KPIs for the clients for the last mile delivery especially. Let's say uh, we have a 26 hours average lead time for local delivery in Ukraine. We, in 60 seconds, given the chance to clients to pick up and send a parcel from our PUDO. And the most important, we have a mobile application which includes all of the needed information regarding the tracking events and uh, real-time data regarding the couriers so we can see where the courier is and we avoid any misunderstanding on the last mile delivery i believe that european clients are facing a lot with the trouble regarding the delivery to the neighbor or some other uh, mistakes so uh, additionally the postal providers can create the great networking for the private companies such we are so together with network of postal providers and last mile delivery and speed of delivery for the private company we can create a really great atmosphere for our clients and as a result so we will lead to more volume we will uh, create more healthy environment for the injection and uh, generally for, for the speeds and predictability for our customers. Thank you. 
Thank you, Vanna. You highlighted the importance of trace and tracking and the customer experience. The next question will focus more on the consumer experience, but certainly your insights were very valuable. Mr. Ignacio Meyer, would you like to share your views? Thank you, Santosh. Thank you very much. Uh, as you know, in Mail Americas, we specialize in cross-border e-commerce, so my opinion will more, more focus on that. And to be honest, I think that Lars and Gana already addressed the importance of technology integration and, and stuff. So what I think that, why is the partnership important is because of something more intangible. There are two things, and these are experience and knowledge. So what I believe that it's very important in these two is that perhaps with the private sector can bring the experience and the knowledge of what the customers want and the postal sector can provide all of the experience of knowing what the country wants, what the people of the country need and how to implement it. So think about it. If you merger these two things, the private players, knowing what the customers, the international marketplaces, consolidators want, what their standards are, what their targets, their goals are, and you merge it with the postal players saying, okay, in here we do things like this, you want it like that, okay, let's get together and let's agree on how would the best business will be, the best service will be, then you have a killer service because you are merging the best of two worlds. The private players knowing what they want and the postal saying, okay, this is how can we fulfill it. This is how we build it together in order to build a very good solution. So the postal sector can provide a lot in terms of structure and in terms of knowing the people and the private players with the experience of knowing what the international players need. That's my view on this point. And that's very valuable insight in terms of sharing experience and wealth of knowledge, what you've done as a private player across the region and how you can enable post office with all those benefits. So Mr. Jacob Wospovic, would you like to share your views? Yes, I would very much like to do so. So let me start by saying I have over 30 years of experience in pretty much all modes of transport and also uh, in um, uh, beneficial cargo owners environments. Um, so with that in mind, um, I'm a very practical person. So I recognize what Walter already mentioned that in general, we may have up to three at least logistic service providers involved uh, at origin in the long haul and then the final mile delivery. So information exchange between the beneficial cargo owners also identified by Walter, all of these LSPs needs to be unambiguous and well understood amongst all of those. The only way that that is going to be possible is if we start adopting and using internationally, ident uh, internationally and globally accepted standards such as ISO standards to make sure that we all talk about the same things when we identify things uh, in, in information exchanges. All technology that we use uses identifiers and associated data. So it must be easy to transfer to transfer physical objects, the boxes that we have between the players without having to do all sorts of additional non-value added activities as is currently the case. Now, I would like to stress once again, in order to do this, you really are going to have to use globally data, uh, accepted data standards. The good news is they all exist. We don't need to invent anything new. It's all there. We just have to apply those standards in order for us, being postals or non-postals doesn't matter. We can use those existing standards to achieve these partnerships um, and exchange of information between all of these players, including uh, all of the LSPs and all of the beneficial cargo owners involved, such that we can ensure that the right transport solution is offered and executed seamlessly, regardless of which state
stage of the execution we are from the moment that goods are being sold to the moment that those same goods are being received by the buyer. Um, and that will mean that we need to start collaborating more to use the resources each of us has to a higher level of utilization, because otherwise efficiency is not going to be achieved. And the loss of efficiency is additional cost to all of us, including those that buy products online. I hope I've been able to sort of summarize this in two minutes, Santosh. Uh, there will, um, uh, I guess, Thank some you. more time um, later on to delve into more detail on all the topics. Yes, you did summarize, but it took almost three minutes. And let's stick to the time if possible. And I think one of the th two things which I've learned is more about the data set and cross-border. With that, I'd like to give an opportunity for Mr. Neil Niall O'Neill, who runs a cross-border platform uh, for cross-border e-commerce platform. Mr. Neil, would you like to go forward? Yeah, thank you, Santosh. Um, and and also, there's a very big, if we have any of our Italian friends in post Italiana, I'd like to say, uh, Buono Ferragosta because it's a, a big celebration in Italy today. Um, but thank you, Sandosh. As, as indicated, and as spoken by, by Jaco and everybody here, um, and Lars earlier on, data is key to, um, to success. Um, and, um, and it's touching on standardization, I suppose, is central for the transmission of that data. So our company provides cross-border customs compliance technology solutions. So AI-driven technologies for, for using natural language for the classification of goods. And that's that's a really, really important piece because without those strong foundations, the rest of the customs compliance procedures, it will create friction throughout the, the, the customs compliance procedures. But without going on and repeating what everybody has already said, I think what's really important here is that the technology and the knowledge and the experience is all available. And that's where I believe the power of the UPUCC is. It's actually by being able to communicate that and to make our technologies and make our experience, uh, to be able to share that experience through the platform. So that's it. Thank you, Mr. Neil. I think as Mr. Walter mentioned in his presentation, uh, the, all the details are provided from the point of sale and you initiate that part very well in terms of data being available and ready in standardization format, all becomes critical. So this is a very important point. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. Okay. But also that data can be captured, cleaned, reviewed, scanned, improved anywhere through the validation of both for export and for import. So whether it be a DDP or a DDU or a scan and trace um, stage, there's always areas to integrate those APIs to make the data better and to capture and to clean before that data is distributed to ITMAT or into UPU CDS. So. Yes, Mr. Neil. At the same time, as much as we have data, when it goes to cross border, the regulatory challenges and compliances, which we need to adhere to, we will cover that aspect in our question number three. I think one common thing which I really learned is more about how does the end consumer sees and views all of that. So certainly you'd like to hear maybe from Mr. Neil, starting from you on what's your view on how important is the customer experience in this entire journey? Absolutely. Um, I think everybody knows the, the pitfalls in relation to, to DDU. Um, I don't think any, any of us have ever had the experience of a postman knocking early in the morning and looking for cash for a parcel that you didn't expect. Paying additional handling fees is a good customer experience. So customer experience and transparency is the key to success here for everybody. Um, so uh, just the technology, all of the solutions available, getting that data piece right, being able to present through your networks. I think the our our services that we provide as a company are quite broad in that we 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 provide services right throughout the, the called the customer the parcel journey, whereas we have APIs that can fit into the uh, the checkout. So being able to provide that customer with the transparency of point of purchase is really really important, and nobody likes to be surprised. But getting that data right at source also means that you're making the job easier for our postal partners. So our postal partners receive accurate data and then that's submitted, uh, submitted correctly to customs, which ensures a, a smooth end-to-end -end customer experience. Um, so uh, exa again, it comes back to data. Uh, that's where our particular focus is and that's where I believe that um, it's a critical part of getting the customer experience correct. So that's great. I think transparency and the final loading cost is very important for consumer because nobody likes surprises after the delivery. So exactly. thank you. Mr. Mr. Wolfsburg, would you like to share views on customer experience? 
Yeah, uh, very much actually, because uh, I'm uh, I buy online as well. Uh, so um, I have my own customer experiences, which are not altogether that um, let's say that that um, joyful. Um, so basically, uh, we need to recognize that currently the information that a customer actually gets for the execution of especially long range deliveries is uh, pretty appalling. Um, one of the key reasons there is that there is little or no exchange between the various um, logistic service providers that are um, involved in this end-to-end uh, -end journey of the goods from the seller to the buyer, us, basically. Uh, we also need to realize that that is also caused by one big fact that's often overlooked in our industry, and that is that 90 to 95% of transport and logistics is um, micro and small and medium enterprises that have few or no resources for information technology and therefore are very poorly integrated moment at the moment in the exchange of the information that they should capture and should share, share as part of what they do in this delivery process. Now, we need to fix this as an industry and especially in the e-commerce uh, context uh, where this is, the MSMEs are really a prevalent uh, feature. There are technologies available for this that have long that are long standing and have proven themselves. Uh, they're um, amongst others, PEPL and EFTI are based on the same concept of connect once, communicate everywhere, which basically means that those micro and small and medium enterprises they only connect once and then they can serve any and all of the bigger players, be they LSPs or BCOs, to exchange the information so that ultimately I know and I can have confidence that my goods will arrive at a predictable moment in time. As was already pointed out also by Ghana, I think, as a prime thing that customers really want. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Mr. Jacko. Uh, so I know that when consumer buys from a website, especially cross-border, their first experience is about the website and the last mile. But however, the middle mile and the last mile players may not be clearly visible to the customer. But uh, Mr. Uh, Mayor, how do you suggest, do you think the private players could help increase the experience, though they may or may not get the complete visibility of what you are offering? Well, Santosh, uh, as you know, I'm a millennial and we are in the era of the globalization. So what I believe is that the best way to perform a good customer experience is with information. So um, again, um, we work in a cross-border trail. So we go from first mile in some country up to middle mile flying through the world up until custom gears and last mile. And what we have found is that as soon as you make the purchase in any marketplace in the world, 10 minutes later, you are already wanting to know where that parcel is. And if you don't see movement for more than 15 minutes, you're thinking that it's not moving at all. So what we have found in Mail Americas is that the best way to perform a good customer experience is to show every step of the way and to communicate it to the customer. How do we communicate it? With information. Your parcel is here, is there, and it's up until the end. And when it arrives, uh, we interconnect with the post office at destination, and we agree on what is the information that we are going to show to the customer. And what information is the most information? As much as we can give to the customer, so he can know at the exact time where the parcel is, is the best way to perform a very good customer experience. And because of that, we encounter different challenges, of course. And when you provide as much knowledge as possible, then the customer can uh, make a full review on how the experience went. Uh, I thought that custom clears was going to be shorter. I thought that the air freight was going to be shorter. If you can give them good metrics and full information, we believe that the customer experience uh, is the best as possible. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Meyer. You mentioned about the customer experience information sharing, but sometimes when there are multiple parties involved in a transaction, the right channel of communication 
also become equally important. So maybe Ms. Ghana Motrescu, and would you be able to highlight on how your experience has been in Ukraine, especially when it comes to buying from a different website and being delivered either between postal post offices or a private party? How does this integration happen? Yeah, this, this question is very important because our API should uh, conclude all of the information which clients need as a result. And I would like to highlight here that not just we should do a huge part of work with the API integration. However, Sender, our e-commerce Sender, uh, already has some uh, criteria how they choose in last mile provider and middle mile provider and first mile as well. And they have some machine artificial intelligence when they can choose the right provider by indicating the rates, NPS, percentage of non-delivered parcel lost claims, etc. So clients, uh, uh, e-commerce sender already manage experience of the final client, final recipient. What we need to do here, we need to fulfill all of the obligation which they rely on us. So it's fully trackable uh, parcels. We need to include all of the tracking events in any stage of the transportation. Then proceed the custom clearance. Uh, our client's expectation for proceeding the custom clearance, it's like 20 minutes for all consolidation which we got. That's why the tracking event should immediately be on place on the platform. Uh, in case if you have any question regarding the API exchange for the tracking events, you already failed. So if you failed, that means another provider will get part of your business and, uh, and this volume will switch immediately. That's why we are working hard with our KPIs and generally working with the customer very deeply to involve customer into the communication to make customers be aware where the parcel is and that's why we have a lot of tools for that is it's exactly to talking with the customer thank no, you that's a, that's a great point in terms of having visibility a real-time visibility helps customer to be at home to accept packages to ensure there's no theft all this becomes very important at the same time when you partner with a public postal player like a local regional post offices and it, it's very important to make sure that there's a seamless experience, which of course we'll talk in the next session, the how do we engage on a regulatory as well as compliance basis on the data. And Mr. La, uh, Mr. Carlson, uh, would you what would be your experience? Uh, would you like to share your experiences on the customer journey? No, absolutely. And I think our colleagues, my colleagues have already on the panel uh, said really good, uh, a number of good things that I fully support. But of course, a, a really good customer experience can only be achieved by a collaborative approach. Because as being mentioned by several, it's about how can we actually exchange the data that is there all through the process, as Ignacio said before as well, right? That is what we also need to do. And, and of course, in one way, the customer many times are, are most interested in the last mile delivery when will the package come to me uh, of course that can only be achieved in a good way if we actually have full supply chain visibility now the good news is that uh, the infrastructure is there the standards are there to do this and even though Walter uh, gave us a, a good challenge in the beginning and he's right I think there's also again as I said before positive things around this how we actually can get the journey uh, better and, and more transparent uh, and by actually using existing systems of, of different players, but we need to connect them and connect the data between them. Uh, and that is possible to do. That is what we work on and many other work on right now. And my final point would be, it's also one of the issues we talked about uh, around borders, right? So government agencies, and we'll get into the question in the next question, uh, around regulatory uh, enforcement. That is one of the reasons why sometimes we can't have transparency, full transparency. There's a black box at the border. This is starting to change now. So uh, there's a number of initiatives and projects we've been involved in, and actually having also the border agencies involved. They need this data as well. And by needing it, we can also provide both them and the client at the end of the day, the right to transparency and visibility all through the supply chain, including passing these numbers of borders that actually every pack, package goes through. So I think there's a, there's some really good uh, experience to be shared and actually some the next couple of years we'll see a lot of development in this area. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Carlson. That's very valuable. As we see that more and more data and transparency is being requested and published, uh, there's also a balance between the data privacy, data shielding, how much information should share should be shared outside the country, within the country, and between the merchants and the dropshippers. 
So, and keeping that in mind, there are certain, several uh, compliances and regulatory challenges which come up. This could be also not just in part of transaction, but also in terms of engaging with postal operators and engaging with the private players across multiple geographies, the time it takes to do paperwork, the time it takes to work with government entities. I'd certainly like to understand how do you walk through this part in terms of establishing a business relationship while keeping in mind of the complexities of engagement and on top of it, the international uh, rules and regulations of data privacy, the source and destination could be in very different locations as well and under different laws. So maybe uh, Mr. Carlson, would you like to start with for responding to this question? No, absolutely. It's one of my favorite topics in the world, having also 30 years, odd years in, in international institutions and governments. And obviously, you're absolutely right. But there's also a common interest here. And what we're starting to see is framework legislation like the UK Electronic Trade Documents Act we see in European Union, uh, as Walter was referring to, a number of new changes that in one way also, of course, make trade compliance more complex and complicated. But it's also possible because two things to actually and I normally call it Global Trade 2.0. And I always say that, you know, it's, we, we could start not talking about e-commerce anymore because it's norm, it's commerce. And it all has the same infrastructure and it all has its same need of data. So what we are starting to actually see is also how trade regulations, free trade agreements, different type of technical agreements now include also how data will be protected and also when voluntary data submission can be used to actually enhance the customer experience, enhance the controls at borders, but at the same time, make the journey much better and seamless. And that is integration of a trade. And that can only be done again with data and having access from data. I always say the border used to start at, uh, you know, at the ground, but it doesn't anymore. It does when somebody pick up the phone and buy a ticket or buy something online. And of course, that is the data source we've been talking about. Final point, the interesting thing here is that I think with voluntary uh, means and, and framework legislation, much can be achieved because, again, there are technical solutions already there. The standards are already there. The infrastructure is already there. And we talk a lot about the MSEs and, and SMEs involved here, but they are using the same infrastructure as everybody else. So let's connect those partners that is in the stakeholders to actually make sure we make an inclusive new Global Trade 2.0, where we actually change, exchange, and use this data all through, including with government agencies. No, you're absolutely right. At the same time, when it comes to international and cross-border, do you see a bigger role where UPU could lead this in, lead the transformation? I, I think UPU has to lead this uh, transformation because uh, that is where there's two things that nobody else have. And we talked about the last mile delivery as still being USP, USP of, 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 uh, of the postal operators. But also the data networking is necessary. And UPU and uh, the postal operators actually have that system already in place. So, of course, many others need to connect with UPU. And UPU, UPU need to take a leading role together with organizations, as mentioned before for like the World Customs Organization, my old organization, uh, and, and several other big players, but not only big players, obviously, as we talked about, it also needs to protect and, and make sure that this can be done with technology, with easy collection of data points uh, through apps and whatever it might be that is already existing in the market, where we connect and use the data standards to actually make sure that everybody can be involved, including also emerging economies and postal uh, operators in those countries can actually take the lead to make this happen at the borders and through borders. Thank you, Mr. Carlson. And Ghana, would you like to share views? As a private company, you are operating across multiple countries. How is your experience in working with different regulations? And how do you see UPU playing a, a helping hand in, this, in these activities? Yeah, so we are quite new member of the community. That's why we just start to face with a lot of requirements and the information which we should fulfill, actually. Regarding that, of course, uh, we have a homework to do in Ukraine regarding the custom clearance and generally 
data uh, standards and uh, the white postal label, etc. So we have a job to do on this matter. And of course, we are working uh, hard with governmental side to make sure that they are okay to connect the postal providers and, and final mile deliveries as express companies together. Because at, at this stage, the connection uh, on the governmental level is not that abuse. So uh, we still need different uh, custom clearance process uh, between the postal provider and custom clearance uh, for the private companies also the different type of the bonded warehouse is required in ukraine as well so a lot of uh, uh, a lot of uh, actually job to do and we just on the way to fulfill that that's great and mr meyer would you like to share views on how how are things at your end when it comes to europe and africa and south america Sure, Santos. Uh, I believe that here is, uh, as, as I've been spoken, the important thing is that the post office understands and passes clear rules to the private uh, part of the partnership. And then the private part needs to address it to the customer and provide good and quality information and attach to the rules so that customs can uh, have the tranquility that everything is in compliance. So the information and the communication between the postal and the private entities are vital, not only to comply, but also to maybe propose and discuss improvements with the regulatory authorities, because sometimes the regulatory are uh, old and need to be changed in a proper way, in a polite way, of course. And with this, the private players can provide new trends and new information on the markets. And the postal authorities can channelize these new proposals into the regulatory authorities. And also it is very important that uh, the post offices, as of the universal service obligation, need to serve all of the country. And they need to have a differential in order to cover these extra costs. It is very important for the post office to be able to enhance this differential that they should get because of having to serve all of the country. So I believe that here, the private players in the partnership can provide a lot of information and a lot of data in order to help the post offices that, from my experience, in some countries are not uh, enforcing the advantages that they may have, such as monopolies on delivering parcels from zero to for one kg, small packages and stuff. They should be having a monopoly and they are not having it. So uh, sometimes maybe the private players can help them with a lot of information in this. Thank you. Uh, good point, because sometimes these are beyond postal operators. It comes to the government and regulators as well in terms of defining their policies in, within those countries. And as they say, the success of the strength of a chain depends on the weakest link. If one link is broken, the entire transaction fails. Mr. Jaco, uh, you have a lot more experience across the chain, across the life cycle of all these transactions. What's your view on what are the top regulatory challenges and how do you see UPU playing a bigger role? Yeah, uh, let me start with the cross uh, border. Um, I think, and I've said this before, that transport and logistics and e-commerce is no exception, is involved in the biggest game of Chinese whispers ever for the last couple of decades. We seem to just push data along the chain. I think that's a, that chain is far too often broken. Uh, so I think we should be far more, um, let's say, forward looking. So what it's, whatever is on the box should be able to link whomever is handling that box back to the data at source so that you have reliable information available at the time that you need to make decisions. And that is true for the LSPs handling this. This is true for any of the agencies that are involved in cross-border procedures as well. And there are standards available for this again. Uh, so this is nothing uh, that's beyond the realm of possibilities. Um, is there a role for this in the UPU? Potentially, but I think it's more of a, a, an exercise for the LSPs and the BCOs and authorities themselves. 
but I do wish to highlight one element of regulations that we seem to not discuss so far, and that is cities and deliveries into a regulated city environments. There is an ever increasing level of uh, regulation there about what can be done in terms of the actual delivery of the e-commerce parcels in those environments. And basically the trend seems to be to force ever more consolidation of the flows of these goods and consolidation of flows means much more collaboration between the public and the private entities that are involved also in moving stuff towards the city, moving stuff into the city, and also moving returns back out of the city for the return uh, flows. Um, that part, I think, is too often overlooked, and I don't see any uh, rule for or any room for the UPU to act in that context, truth be told. I think that's generally something that is more of a domestic issue with the domestic operators, the LSPs, uh, including the postal uh, providers in that country to uh, collaborate to make sure that um, the customer experience ultimately is going to be improved uh, by working together much better than they are currently working together. Thanks for the valuable insight. And it finally comes down to the individual country and the postal operators to have a great intention, openness, and excitement to engage with private players. And uh, Ms. Neil, uh, I know that as a private freight players, every country, you can choose to work with certain countries or not, but you have a very uphill task of having a cross-border checkout where you do not know where the package will be going. And the rules in every country, regulations and terms and customs, everything keeps changing. So how do you think the global uh, regulations and privacy and transparency and pricing, all of this play a role. And how do you, how does your company address those issues? Thank you, Santosh. Um, I, I'll, so I, I think as a foundational piece with the global requirements for AED or EAD, um, what we know is that the, this is a constantly changing and dynamic environment. But we know that all of the industries are working in one direction. You know, so if I could kind of take a, a, a slightly different skew on this, what I was going to, to say from a leadership perspective, um, in our experience over the last number of years working with postal players and both postal players and, and LSPs, the postal players and the LSPs have been that um, the link between the smaller merchants, because ultimately the compliance risk sits with the merchants and the people who are sending the goods. The challenge there, especially for those micro SMEs, is that Cross-border taxes are very, very complicated. So if you're a UK business selling into the EU pre-IOSS, or so post-Brexit, you need to understand the regulations across 27 different member states in relation to the 18 duties and taxes. So that standardization around the IOSS has been a massive benefit, both to the regional economies, but also to help to uplift our sales. Because pre-Brexit, uh, pre or excuse me, pre-Brexit, there was a scare factor out there because a lot of businesses that we've seen actually reduce selling or cross border because of the complexities or the perceived complexities of those taxes. So, um, anecdotally, I just believe that the postal authorities, the national posts themselves, have a, a vital or a pivotal, um, uh, again, through that, through, through their network, through their power, through their experience, to be able to communicate and to educate those uh, those local audiences. Ultimately, that's going to help to boost those regional economies from a socioeconomic development. It's going to help to boost revenues and, and really help to grow those businesses and those economies. Now, maintaining the technical side of everything that we do has been a massive, massive challenge. So, because we we understood going back in, it's everything being driven by the regulations and WCO guidelines. We realized that with emerging technologies and the power of machine learning and AI, it would be possible to address specific challenges within that foundational piece around harmonization code identification. We would, by working with our partners and with the new changes to ICS and ICS2 and the requirements for more complex descriptive languages, traditional, um, with traditional sellers um, simply use natural language. They don't use customs language. And that's where you have this friction point between the actual sellers and the customs authorities. So 
being able to utilize technology and AI to be able to solve these problems at a, you know, at a, at a vast scale is actually vitally important. How we maintain that has been an ongoing challenge and it is a, a, it's a wonderful thing is, if, that we've actually been able to, to, to grow our technology over the last number of years, but it is a very, very, very com complex um, uh, procedure. Now, even from a pricing perspective, our guidelines are all driven by actually accessing all of the global regulations around VAT, duties and taxes, et cetera. But our technology is, uh, uh, it's, technology is the key for scalability. Thank you for your response. And as I know that while we focus on customs, tariffs, taxes, and compliant data compliances, at the same time in the last one month, at least seven countries have upload, upgraded their entire data sharing and uh, privacy rules of the country. So that becomes even more challenging. And uh, probably this is where UPU could be a consolidator, work with different countries to collect information on different policies and set guidelines so that you as a player, private player, don't need to go to hundreds of countries to collect that data. And with that, we segue to our last question on sustainability. It's one of the very important and globally aware situation we all are facing and everybody has a role to play. Uh, unfortunately, due to the lack of time, we'll request less than a minute for responding to this. Maybe Neil, you could start with that as you're on the screen. And what's your view on what you are trying to do in terms of sustainability goals for the entire uh, uh, planet? Uh, quite simply, if we can remove friction and have transparency and help parcels get from point A to point B um, as quickly as possible, um, that's the key. But when it comes to collaboration between public and postal i think we discussed previously on a, on a previous call if we have four or five vehicles both postal and commercial in the same jurisdictions delivering postal why can't they share you know why can't they share data why can't they share load why can't they share that last mile experience as an example to be able to collaborate more effectively to take more carbon emissions off the off the ground but that all comes back to again data sharing of data, transparency, having standardization across those technologies and being able to communicate openly and to be, be able to leverage those commercial opportunities. I, that, I believe that's a key to, to success. That's, uh, and that's greatest a great thing. point. And I think you mentioned also with the EAD processes that takes away a lot of paper and focuses on digitization. That's again an important part. You mentioned about the last mile consolidation and instead of six, six different trucks coming to my house on a daily basis, I'd rather have one truck to come with all these products consolidated. And that's something which postal operators could have a great uh, point of view and opportunity to take as a consolidation. And Ghana, what's your view on sustainability? Yeah, I fully agree. We have to share the space and combine all the parcels. I mean, if it's possible to one truck and deliver as much as possible, as fast as possible. Also in Nova Pochta in Ukraine, uh, how we are trying to reduce carbon emission is changing and minimalizing the roads actually and improving trucks loading capacity. It's ac actually what we are talking here for cross border as well. It is our local strategy. Uh, also, we had a strategy to uh, improve our um truck uh, with uh, electronic vehicles as well and scooters too uh, however due to the some circumstances as a war in ukraine it's hard to be only with uh, electronic devices on stage that's why we are working hard to just optimize and, and minimize and all of our efforts for the last mile delivery and this is uh, about schedule about improving loading capacity and joint work for the last mile in general cross border delivery thank you thank you uh, as you said, as you mentioned that certainly uh, all these steps, what you're talking about is very important. At the same time, the consumer awareness is equally important because they request, if they request every two hour delivery, four hour delivery, then consolidation becomes a challenge. So it's That's always true. a trade off, trade -off yeah. between the consumer requirements and the operations and delivery operations. Mr. Meyer, what's your experience on sustainability and how your company is focusing on meeting the sustainability goals and enabling postal operators with that? In mainland Americas, what I've found is to take different steps of origin are very important in order to detect and avoid sending any forbidden goods into destination. Because if you think about it, if you're going to send them just to make reverse logistics, you are making a very big uh, carbon footprint and for nothing at the end of the day. So detecting what parcels cannot be 
or are forbidden at the destination country is very important. And also, since I only got minutes, it is very important to work on the quality of the information in order not to have failed deliveries at destination. So to work together as postal with the postal structure and with the private players, with the customers to provide good quality information in addressing in order to avoid fake deliveries and to avoid making two, three, four delivery attempts. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, my, Mr. Mayor. And uh, Jacko and Lars, if you could keep it very short. Mr. Jacko, please just go ahead. Yeah, I can keep it very short. I wholeheartedly concur with the consolidation of flows. I do wish to highlight two uh, other things, though, that have really more to do with the shippers or the e-merchants. So first of all, highlighting that we uh, don't want all of these rush orders um, that would prevent consolidation. Uh, the default options for delivery should at least enable uh, the fact that things can be consolidated for delivery. Uh, so that's uh, that's uh, one uh, element. And the second thing is returns. I mean, if you can also prevent returns of stuff uh, that the customer receives initially and then sends back, that would also be a huge benefit in terms of sustainability. And again, this is on the seller's side, not so much on the logistics service provider's uh, uh, ballpark, but it is very, very important for sustainability to be achieved. Every 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 party which plays a role has a is an obligation to manage sustainability, and uh, Mr. Carlson. Yes, of course. Uh, as one of the big movers of goods in the world, uh, this is on a top agenda uh, as for many else. And of course, as we speak, the first uh, green container ship is on its way to Copenhagen on its maiden trip. Uh, and of course, uh, electronic vehicles for inland delivery and so forth is on our scale as well. But I would like to just underline what Neil said before that at the end of the day, we know that a lot of these uh, footprints, carbon footprints and so forth, is actually around the borders. So again, removing friction here, making sure that we can have more seamless movement. And that needs, again, uh, to be integrated. It needs to be, uh, I fully agree, on the consolidation piece, but also, again, the data exchange to be able to make sure that we do not have stops at borders that are too long, which is also causing a, a bad carbon footprint for everybody involved. And I think we are on the way of doing that, but we also need to start measuring it actually a little bit more around this to actually optimize it and then work together in cooperation to make it work. Uh, that's absolutely right. Knowing where you are will help you define and de design how you get to the destination uh, goals of sustainability. And thank you everyone for this sessions. And I'd like, I'd, may I request Mr. Walter Trezek to summarize his takeaways from the entire session. And that actually also leads to our next month's event on uh, PPZ. Mr. Walter, please go ahead. Thank you, Santosh. Uh, thank you so much um, for this fantastic webinar. Um, for me, um, in, in the last minute or two, um, three major points as takeaways. I understood that the harmonization of data exchange in advance uh, globally is of key essence. Unifying uh, networks and applications seems to be a key role the UPU can play. The interconnectivity between um, existing networks, uh, between designated operators and wider postal sector players, might they be logistic service providers or solution providers, is of essence. And the role of the UPU uh, shown then uh, webinar today, where we see wider postal sector players deeply engaged um, on the platform of the UPU um, to discuss the pending problems in global e-commerce related to freight and transport. Thank you very much indeed. And with that, I would like to point out that on September the 12th, uh, we will host again a webinar, this time based um, on the focus on of the postal prosperity zones. Um, this is targeted um, uh, onto existing infrastructures already globally deployed by free zones uh, to interconnect cross-border 
based on UPU harmonized electronic advanced data specifications through designated postal operators placing possibly offices of, of exchange right into the free zones, providing access to the global postal network driven and facilitated by the UPU. And with that, back to you, Santosh, and thank you very much indeed, and congratulations. Thank you, dear participants. Back to you, Santosh. Thank you, everyone. And I'd certainly like to, uh, I'm sorry that we could not address the questions, and I'll work with Veronica and the Secretariat to make sure we find ways to respond to some of the questions which has been made. And I'll also take time to uh, thank all our support team, especially from the Secretary, from Alex, Veronica, Thea, and of course the communications team from Kayla and uh, Ekaterina, and of course the PTC team to help us support us through hosting this entire environment and the starting of the webinar uh, on time and with 100% predictability. Thank you everyone. I look forward to seeing you on 12th of September with another series of our Conservative Committee uh, webinar. Thank you very much. Have a good one.